Cyrus the Great came to power in 559 BC. It was the beginning of the Achaemenid dynasty. Their reign would change the course of history and redefine architectural possibility. If you're looking at the greatest personages in history who have affected the world, Cyrus the Great is one of the few who deserves that epithet, the one who deserves to be called the Great. The empire over which Cyrus ruled was the largest the ancient world had ever seen and may be to this day the largest empire ever. By 554 BC, Cyrus had crushed all rivals and became the undisputed leader of Persia. Now it was time to conquer the world. And if he was going to build an empire, he would need a magnificent capital city to reflect its growing stature. In 550 BC, Cyrus launched one of the most ambitious engineering projects anywhere in the ancient world, the Persian Empire's first great capital city at Pasargad, located in modern Iran. Cyrus was a very innovative builder, and I might add that his standards were particularly high. We can also say that his building project reflected in some ways the technologies that he found in the course of his various conquests. Like the Romans centuries later, the Persians were borrowers. They took the best and most advanced ideas from the cultures they conquered, then developed them even further into technologies uniquely their own. The art and engineering of Pasargad drew on influences as far-flung as Assyria, Egypt, and Asia Minor, thousands of miles away. There were stone workers, wood workers, brick makers, uh, relief makers, and we know that these were people often imported from all over the empire. Today, over 2,500 years later, crumbling ruins are the only remnants of what was once here, Persia's first shining capital city, Parsagad's showpiece was its two magnificent palaces, surrounded by a majestic park and vast formal gardens. Among them, the first known appearance of the astonishing Paradisia, the four-quartered walled Persian gardens. The gardens had over 1,000 yards of channels of carved limestone, designed such that water would enter small basins every 16 yards. The Paradisia of Parsagad laid the foundations for many of the world's most magnificent gardens for the next two millennia. What's particularly different with the Paradisia is the application of the geometric design. So we have squares, rectangular designs, floral designs, cypress trees, wild grasses, roses, lilies, all kinds of vegetations. And this is the concept of the modern park as we know it. As Pasargad was being built, Cyrus added to his dominion, one enemy kingdom after another. But Cyrus was a very different kind of king. He refused to enslave his new subjects, a revolutionary concept in the ancient world. He recognized the local validity, if you will, of different religions and beliefs, and uh, allowed those things to, to persist. In 539, Cyrus conquered Babylon, but he did not present himself as a conqueror. He presented himself as a liberator, rescuing these people from their despotic ruler. And then he did a totally unprecedented thing. He freed the Jews. The Jews had been living in Babylon in captivity ever since Nebuchadnezzar destroyed Jerusalem and their temple. And Cyrus freed them. Now, it could be said in hindsight or political history that Cyrus was looking for a buffer state between a hostile Egypt and his own empire. But so what? The point is, is that no one had ever done anything like this, and hardly anyone has ever done anything like it since. But subsequently, he is the only Gentile in the Bible to be referred to as Mashiach, or Messiah. As... Uh one distinguished Oxford scholar once said to me, 
Cyrus always had a very good press. It's a, it's a very true uh, statement. Before he could launch the campaign that would make Persia the lone superpower of the ancient world, Cyrus the Great died in battle in 530 BC. He didn't live long enough to show what really he could have done outside the battlefield. So in that sense, you can compare him with Julius Caesar, who conquered, but did not live long enough, uh, he was assassinated, to put the empire that he conquered together. By the time Cyrus died, the Persian Empire had three capitals, Babylon, Susa, and Ekbatana. But he chose to be buried in the city he created, Pasargad in a tomb that mirrored the man who built it. At Cyrus's tomb, one of the aspects that shows his humility is that tomb is relatively unadorned. Very simple, very elegant. Cyrus's engineers built the tomb in the form of simple but heavy stone Western structures. They began by laying large rectangular cut stones and used ramps, pulleys, and clamps to build the tomb to its height of 36 feet. The Tomb of Cyrus is a very simple, outwardly modest monument for somebody who uh, had created the largest empire that the world had seen to that date. And it's still remarkably well preserved after 25 centuries. For 30 years, no power on earth could stand up to Cyrus the Great. Now his throne was up for grabs, creating a power vacuum that would throw the ancient world into chaos.